name is Abby. This is Craft Studio, and this is where I share all the crafts that I'm working on. So come on in. You are welcome. Uh, grab a cup of coffee or tea or soda or water, whatever you like to drink, and sit back, relax, and see what I've been working on. Um, I have been working on some crochet, a crochet afghan, actually. I have some sewing to share with you. Um... I have some yarn to share with you and I have some patterns um, a book and a magazine so so let's get started <laughs> so welcome I am so glad you could stop by today um, you can follow me on Instagram I am there as craft studio um, I also have a shop online uh, craft studio bags I'm also on Facebook and we have a Facebook group, Craft Studio. So search us out and join us there. I share a lot of the things that I make um, on both plate on both platforms, um, and I post videos. I try to do it weekly, uh, but it doesn't always get done weekly. Sometimes it's bi-weekly, so I just do what I can. Um, I am <clears throat> wife and a mother of three children. Um, right now I am a stay-at-home mom and uh, living in Illinois in the United States. So that's a little bit about me. Um, I crochet, I knit, I sew, I do some quilting, and I am learning how to embroidery or embroider one of those. <laughs> I haven't figured that lingo out yet, but anyway, I'm still learning. Anyway, I love to share what I'm working on. I love to share the yarn I use, the patterns I like, and um, little tidbits along the way that I learn, um, mistakes that I make. So hopefully I can spare someone from not making the same mistake I did, things like that. Okay, so let's just jump right in. Um, first, I wanted to show you a finished object in my sewing. This is a cute little uh, sheep that I made, a little mommy sheep. And I made these two little babies. Um, they can come out of the pocket. Aren't those cute? <laughs> oh, here, let me take the other one out. So yeah, it's just a pocket in the front. And I did some embroidery on the back. That's her little tail. It looks like a heart though, so I, I did that. And I also did some stitching on her face, the little sheep's face, her little um, rosy cheeks and her mouth, nose, and then the eyes. So that was the first time I did that. And I think it turned out okay, not too bad. <laughs> um, I love the little ears, I think that's so cute. This was extremely simple and easy. And then the little, her little baby sheep. I didn't do any stitching on their faces. I just kind of left them. Um, but I filled them with these cute, they're called poly pellets. And um, they're, they kind of give it a bean bag feel. And um, just so they are um, fit easier into the pocket and easier if the kids want to play with them. And you shake. Anyway, I've never tried those before, but I found these at Walmart, poly pellets. And you can use them with polyfill, you can use them by themselves. Um, they're great for weighted blankets, lap pads, dolls and crafts, bean bags, seek and find games. And I really didn't need to use a whole lot, you know, because um, you want them to be able to move around. So, anyway. And I will make more of these. I have, it actually came on a big sheet of fabric that I, uh, I bought at a quilting shop. And so there was the sheep, there's a chicken, a cow, and a pig. So I will be making more. So stay tuned for that. And <clears throat> I will show you really quick. These are really simple if you're interested in this, but you don't have a lot of experience in sewing because I don't have a lot of experience in sewing but this was extremely easy so the fabric comes with all the directions it comes with the 
the um, these are the baby chicks that's the chicken you just cut them out um, stitch them together stuff them I mean that's pretty much it <laughs> and um, so anyway I am really excited to finish these and give them away maybe to some other little children that might like them I think these are a little bit too little kitty type things for my girls I think they're a little bit older so I was going to um, my friend has a home daycare and I was gonna give them some of them to her I'm gonna keep a couple I think I'm gonna keep the sheep and I'm there's a chicken you know I like chickens <laughs> oh back there see my chicken she's hiding right there oh there's my chicken and my rooster <laughs> um Tilly and Cornelius yeah so anyway I really like chickens so anyway I think I'm gonna keep the chicken and the sheep uh, but I'll give I'll give the cow and the um, the pig away so those are fun I'm sure you could find these online too if you can't get out for some reason or another um, and you would like to order them um, you pay by the yard it's just a big piece of fabric um, and then like I said the directions are on the fabric and it gives you the the list of materials you need and you just cut them out and you know you, you do you might need to iron them I used some fusible fleece but I only did it on one side of the fabric um, uh, just to give it some stability you don't have to do it on either side you don't have to do it at all if you don't want to so very inexpensive project and then I added like I said I did this stitching embroidery on her face I, th I wondered if I should do more but I was like less is more <laughs> so I'm not gonna do all of that um, but yeah that was fun I think it just gives a little bit more dimension to to the face and um, yeah so I'm very pleased with it so all right so that's my finished object in sewing so I'm trying to think what I should share next should I share my afghan? I'll go ahead and share the afghan next. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I've been working on an afghan. A crochet afghan. It is called the Bridal Rose Afghan. And I found it in this book that I purchased at a yard sale. And it is absolutely beautiful. And I love it. This is... Now they did this all in white I'm doing mine in different colors but that's what it looks like so I think you have to make is it 63 yes yeah, 63 squares or blocks that I'm gonna have to make so I, I don't know if I'm gonna make it that big I haven't decided yet or not I guess I'll just keep going until I run out of yarn but anyway this was the first block that I made and I did share this in my last video, um, but the this the ends were the edges were curling up really bad, so I blocked them. And as you can see, it turns out a lot better. You can actually see the stitches, and I really love these because of the 3D flower effect. It's got three layers of petals, and I really like this. I'm using the um, I'm gonna try to pronounce it correctly. This Shapies, Shapies. <laughs> I had to look it up how to pronounce it. Yarn I am using uh, to do this, the stone wash. So this is this color I did for the flower. This is um, moonstone, okay. And then for the outer uh, part, this is deep amethyst. And the next block I made uh, is this one. And I did the flower. Let me see if I can find the color of that. Um, this is Corundum Ruby. Corund Corundum Ruby. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. In the center. And then I did the moonstone around the edge. I blocked this one also. So I think this turned out a lot nicer. A lot nicer. Never blocked before. Um... I think there's more blocking and knitting than there is in crochet, but honestly, I've never done either. But I really felt it was necessary um, just to really show the edging 
and um, the different stitches. So I'm really glad I did because I, I like the effect. I really, I really am pleased with the effect of it. And then this was the third block that I finished. Isn't that gorgeous? I, I love this uh, gold. Let me see if I can find the color of this. Let me hold it up. Um, instant, insta tight. In Instatite, I guess, is the color name. Uh, this goldish color is beautiful. And then I used the moonstone in the middle. So <clears throat> blocked this one as well. So what I'm doing as I go along, I am weaving in all the ends. So all the ends are weaved in. I'm going to block them as I finish them. So um, I'm trying to put it together as I go. Um, so you sew, I think it's nine blocks in a strip. So you have seven blocks of, or seven strips of nine, I believe, if I if I remember correctly, because I was reading through the pattern. So what I'm going to do as I finish the blocks, I will go ahead and weave in the ends. I will go ahead and block them. And then once I get nine, so I've got three done right now, I'm working on a fourth and I'll share that in just a minute. But once I get nine of these, I'm going to go ahead and um, stitch them together to make a, a strip. And then, um, then all you, then all I have to do is when I have enough of the strips, sew those together, put on the border, and I'm done. So hopefully that'll make it go faster. <laughs> but this is the, um, the one I'm working on right now, and I just love this blue color. Oh my goodness, isn't that gorgeous? Let me hold it up a little bit closer so you can see. I really like how this yarn, because it's got um, the, um, it, it's kind of a tonal yarn, because you have the blue and then you have the white intermingled in there. So it really, the stitch definition is amazing. I, that's, I really love the stitch definition that the color provides. It's amazing. I think that's why I'm so excited and I, and it really helps me to keep, um, I don't get bored. I don't get bored. And I'm, I'm learning the, um, the pattern. I'm memorizing the pattern. So hopefully I don't have to look at it, uh, soon. I'll just know exactly what to do because it's, it's not very difficult. It's, um, so it, it's going very quickly, actually. Um, and this color, oh, I'm holding it upside down. This color is Blue Appetite, or Apatite. Yeah, hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. Anyway, love this color. And I just ordered this separate. I had those other colors, but I really wanted another color in there uh, so I ordered this because I just thought that blue was really pretty and I might order another one. I was, I, I, I looked through the colors and I really, there was this very, very pale coral color, which I think would go well with these. So I'm, I'm still trying to figure that out. I'm still debating, but that may be coming. We'll see. <laughs> we will see. Don't want to get carried away, but anyway, I had ordered this pack of yarn to make it another afghan. And, um, I wanted to use it for something else, but when I saw that, I was just like, I think that would be really pretty with this yarn. I don't know if you've ever done that before. I'm sure you have, but you buy yarn for a certain project and then you find another project and you're like, oh, this yarn would be perfect for that. So anyway, I just love mixing and matching things. Okay. So what can I share about next? How about I share what I made really fast. I watched a five, came across this a video on YouTube uh, by So Very Easy. I think her name is Laura. And uh, she had this video on how to upcycle uh, pin cushions, how to turn little knickknacks and planters and things you find around your home or I actually found this at an antique store and turn them into pin cushions. So that's what I did with this one. It's a little girl standing with a, uh, against a gate. So that's one thing I made. 
which I think is just cute. And I also found, oh, Amelia's gonna fall. Oh no. Here, you just come with me, Amelia. This is my little knit teddy bear I made. <laughs> um, and this is the chicken, the chicken I made. So I, re I will share the video. I will post a link in the, um, to that video down below if you're interested. But uh, I had so much fun doing this. And I think they turned out so cute. Oh. Turn it back. Okay. Oh, and then I also, um, she showed at the end of the video how to turn teacups into pin cushions. Now these aren't teacups. This is actually a, a cream and a sugar bowl that a friend gave to me and it was sitting in my china cabinet and it's so beautiful. I, I won't use it for food. It's, it's just too beautiful. And I believe it's an antique. So anyway, but I was like, I can turn that into a pin cushion. So I did. So I picked out this beautiful gold fabric to kind of match, kind of match, but yeah. And turned them into pin cushions. And I just think they're so cute. I love it. But anyway, check her video out because it's amazing. She gives all kinds of tips, all kinds of ideas to inspire you to upcycle something. Um, Cause it's amazing what you can turn into a pin cushion. And Amelia can go right back up there. Okay. Anyway. Okay. Great. What can I share next? I have an acquisition. I guess I can share that next. How about we do that? Okay. And then I'll share some patterns and then I think I'm done. I thought I had one other thing that I wanted to share, but I guess not. Oh, oh, <laughs> magazine. Let me share that really fast. <laughs> so I get this magazine, Quilters World. I just subscribed. They sent me a um, coupon in the mail for a year subscription for $12 or something like that. I can't remember. But anyway, so I subscribed and <clears throat> this magazine just came and it's the autumn 2021 edition and I was sifting through it and I came across something that I'm, I, I'm, I squealed out loud when I saw this and you'll see why. It's a chicken quilt. Knock me over with a feather. It's a chicken quilt. The chickens in a roost. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? Oh my goodness. So if I ever make a quilt, that's definitely the quilt I'm going to make. <laughs> I want to make this quilt. I just don't know when I'm going to be able to do it. But I really want to try. I thought that was so cool. So, if you do not get this this subscription, it is available at stores in the magazine aisle. Um, I saw it at Walmart. So, if you're interested, if you're like, I have to have that, go for it. Okay? <laughs> okay. Quilters, quilters, quilters world. Okay. All right. My next acquisition, I purchased this book comfortable crochet socks. Now I have not tried this yet. I have flipped through it and I'm very excited. I'm going to try to give socks a second chance. Um, I've been crocheting socks actually for, oh, a long time. Well, it's long to me, but anyway, um, I got onto knit socks and I was knitting knit socks. Did I just mess that up? I was knitting socks. Uh, anyway, uh, and I got frustrated because they weren't fitting my feet and then I made crochet socks and those didn't fit my feet. Now ones previously that I had made, they were, they did fit my feet, but anyway, I'm very, so I'm going to give it another try. I'm going to give it another try. And this is, oh goodness. I don't think I can pronounce her name by Sasha Blaise Van Wattendonk. I think she's from Sweden. I'm not sure. But anyway, the sock construction of it, the pictures and how they're made is a lot different than anything I've ever tried before. So I'm really cur curious to see if they fit my feet better um, and how, how, they, how they are um, as far as construction, putting them together and stuff. So I'm excited about that. And I ordered this 
I wanted to try this new sock yarn by Willow Yarns. This is Duo Socks. And it's already caked up, so all I have to do is start it. And um, I'm really excited about that. So there you go. This color is Aegean, and it is 75% um, wool and 25% polyamide. So hopefully that's good. All right, now I have some patterns to share with you very quickly. Um, because you know I love to share patterns that I find. <laughs> okay, so I found this adorable knit teddy bear pattern with a picnic. You can make all the food, and that's so cute. And I cannot remember the shop name. I'll put it on the screen when I do my editing. I found this adorable. Oh... See if I can show the picture without there the chicken little roost um, is that a nesting nesting hen tea cozy is the name of it and I found that online that's that's crochet that's not knitting I found these adorable knit bunnies little outfits it's cute so excited to try these and these are really inexpensive patterns I think they're like a dollar or something and then I found this cute crochet teddy bear <laughs> the little apron and a hat so I'm gonna try some more amigurumi okay I think that's all oh and if you watch my last video I am working on a project for my quilting group. I'm trying to finish a crochet afghan that was donated to us uh, from the, uh, the family of a lady that had passed away. And, and so I went searching and lo and behold, I did. I found it online and it is the exact, um, the exact pattern. It is called uh, Roses and Pineapples, I believe. Afghan, crochet afghan pattern. It was for 71 cents. <laughs> so I'm going to finish this for my quilting group and then they can sell it at the bazaar. And I really, I think I would like to make this also for an afghan for my family for Christmas. Like a Christmas afghan. I don't have a Christmas afghan. And the one that was donated, it's, it's white on the outer edge. Uh, and then the flowers are done Oh, I see, yeah. The flowers are done in red, and then the stitching around the flowers were done in green. So it's red and green and white. So that is kind of a Christmas afghan, in my opinion. But anyway, okay. I think that is all I have to share with you today. Um, thank you so much for watching. Um, take care. God bless. I will see you in the next video. Bye. Happy crafting.